At the start of the movie, Suk Hee, a highly skilled and trained female assassin, enters a hallway. She kills numerous people with her gun and knives. She then enters a room where she kills the boss, Park, and his henchmen using her combat ability. However, as she tries to make her escape and goes outside, she's surrounded by cops. Meanwhile, an agency has been tracking down Park and his men. In the next scene, we see that the agency is monitoring Suk Hee in a CCTV camera, as she has just annihilated Park's gang. We learn that they're after a certain hard drive. The gang's chief says that Suk Hee might be of their use, given her exceptional assassination skills. Suk Hee is then shown in a room in an unnamed facility. She opens her eyes, but then falls unconscious. She's drugged and is given plastic surgery. While recovering, she has a flashback showing an unnamed man. The man is training her for a breath-holding exercise underwater. When it's time, the trainer warns Suk Hee to come out of the water, but she doesn't respond. Hence, he orders his men to quickly rescue her. Suk Hee isn't breathing anymore, so the trainer thinks she's dead. However, just after a while, she suddenly opens her eyes and starts to breathe again. Turns out she was just teasing her trainer. This shows that Suki is very good at holding her breath. The movie then shifts to the present, where the facility authorities are waiting for Suki to regain consciousness. When she doesn't respond, the authorities decide to discard her. Suki realizes this is the opportunity for her to strike, so she attacks them and escapes the room. When she's surrounded by more people, she holds one of them hostage and threatens to kill him with a knife. Next, she runs down through corridors, jumping from room to room to find the exit door. However, she only stumbles upon a strange group of people. Some are practicing ballads while others are learning cooking. All of these people only tell her that she cannot leave the facility. When attempting to escape, Suki comes across a makeup room where a woman tells her that she knows the way to the exit door. With her help, Suki finally gets outside of the facility, but suddenly she's shot in the shoulder by the same woman. The facility turns out to be part of South Korea's intelligence agency and is run by the same woman. The name is Chief Kwon Suk. When Suki regains consciousness, Kwon Suk tells her that they've given her a new start and have faked her death. Kwon Suk further mentions that they've given her a new identity and name, Che Yuan Su. Suk Hee says she doesn't care and wants to die. But Kwon Soon responds that when she and her team examined Suk Hee's body, they discovered she was pregnant. She then offers her a deal. Suk Hee will have to work as an agent for 10 years, and in exchange, she will be released. The latter doesn't want to oblige, but since she has a child on the way, she reluctantly agrees. Next, her training begins, starting with fighting classes as well as acting lessons. While in training, Suk Hee also gives birth to a daughter, whom she names Yun Hye. The facility authorities want to give Suk Hee a completely new identity, so they also have her tattoo removed. During the process, she has flashbacks of the unnamed trainer giving her the shoulder tattoo when she was 20 years old. The trainer asks her who killed her father, but Suki doesn't say anything as she is determined to find the murderer by herself and kill him. Another flashback occurs, and we see Suki as a highly skilled and trained assassin trying to kill an old man with yellow teeth. Suki is captured, and while beating her, the old man tells her he did not kill her father. Eventually, her trainer arrives and shoots the old man, freeing Suki. The flashback continues, and we see Suki as an eight-year-old girl, trained to load a pistol by her trainer. Back in the present, Kwon Suk gives Suki a folder with the info for her first assignment. As assigned, Suki finds the target in his home and wrestles with him for a while. When she kills the target, she looks up to see a young girl on the stairs. This triggers a flashback to seven-year-old Suki, seeing her father being killed. She is hiding under a bed and doesn't get a look at the killer's face. However, she does hear him whistling an eerie tune. When the man comes back into the room, we're shown that this person is Zhang Chun, the old man with yellow teeth. 
Zhang Chun was a friend of Su Qi's father. Turns out her father had stolen a diamond. In revenge, Zhang Chun sold Su Qi to a prostitution ring. When she's about to be forcibly assaulted by a prostitution client, her trainer arrives and rescues her. We learn his name is Li Jung Sang. We also learn why Jung Sang trained Su Qi to be this killing machine and why she's so devoted to him. Having completed her first assignment, Su Qi is released from the facility and will continue to work for the agency from her new apartment that she shares with her daughter Yun Hye. Before leaving the facility, Su Qi bids farewell to Min Ju, the only friend she made there. Unknown to Su Qi, Quan Suk has placed a male agent in the apartment beside her apartment. His name is Jung Hyun Su, and he is to befriend Su Qi and keep tabs on her. Quan Suk also has her men install security cameras around Su Qi's new apartment. As neighbors, Su Qi and Hyun Su become fast friends. Even the little Yun Hye starts taking Hyun Su as a father figure. After a few meetings with each other, Su Qi finally asks Hyun Su out. The male agent had researched everything about Su Qi, so he mostly knows about her likes and dislikes. Thus, he wears a colored tie that she likes. While noticing Jun Hyun Su's tie, it reminds Su Qi of a tie she gave to her trainer, Jung Sang. It is revealed in flashbacks that Suk He and Jung Sang had gotten married. They had gone to Seoul for a honeymoon. During the honeymoon, Jung Sang gets a call one night, informing him that one of his men, Choi Chun Mo, is in serious trouble. He then leaves to save his gang member. Shortly after, Chun Mo approaches Suk He and tells her that his boss, Jung Sang, has been killed. He explains that Jung Sang got killed when he was trying to save him from the murderer who killed Su Qi's father. Chun Mo managed to get away from the fight, but his boss was kidnapped and later killed. Su Qi is devastated as she hears the shocking news. However, in a flashback, we learn that the marriage was not the same for Jung Sang as it was for Su Qi. She says that she's willing to let go of her thirst for revenge if she can get married and live a normal life. Jung Sang realizes that his trained assassin would no longer be of much use, so he sets up an act. He stages a wedding with her and pays people to attend the wedding, and while on their honeymoon, he fakes saving Choi Chun Mo and stages his own death. Thus, we learn that his death was just an act. When Chun Mo tells Su Qi that her husband is dead, she loses her mind and goes on a killing rampage taking out the whole gang who she thinks is behind Jung Sang's death, that is, Park's gang. However, in addition to faking his own death and getting away from her, Jung Sang was so cruel that he wanted his wife dead, hoping to get rid of her forever. He had expected Su Qi to be killed in the process, considering the sheer number of Park's men. Obviously, mere street fighters are no match for our well-trained assassin, thus she kills all of them. This killing scene is the opening of the movie, where Su Qi annihilated all of Park's men. Back in the present, Su Qi and Hyun Su return home after their date. It's evident that both of them have developed feelings for each other, although Hyun Su was spying on him. Before entering her apartment, Su Qi reveals that her husband died years ago. The pair then expresses their feelings for each other and share a kiss. Just then, Su Qi gets a call from Min Ju who has just gone into an accident. She rushes to her friend, only to find out that Min Ju was just lying. She's actually here for her first assignment and needs Su Qi's help. For her assignment, Min Ju has to retrieve a mobile phone from the target. The two women disguise themselves as restaurant servers and approach the target. While Min Ju distracts the target, Su Qi attempts to get his phone. Su Qi succeeds in stealing the phone, but she's soon caught. The target and his men discover Su Qi and Min Ju's real identity as spies, so they attack them. In the ensuing fight, Min Ju is injured very badly. Overcome with vengeance, Su Qi transforms into her assassin form and attacks the opponents with all her might. However, she's overpowered by the men, so she carries Min Ju's lifeless body and goes outside. Just then, Quan Suk arrives at the scene and learns of the situation. 
She tells Su Ki that they cannot hope much for Min Ju as her injury is fatal. Su Ki begins wailing helplessly, realizing that her only friend cannot be saved. Setting aside her emotions, Su Ki retrieves the phone from her target and kills them as per Quan Suk's order. Elsewhere, it's revealed that the information from the phone has documents about Choi Chun Mo, who has now become a gang leader. At the movie's start, when Su Ki had gone to kill Park's men, Chun Mo was the one who stole the hard drive. Quan Suk and the agency are worried that since Su Ki knew him, she may be a double agent. In the following days, Su Ki continues to live at the apartment. The love between her and Hyun Su deepens, so they plan to get married soon. Su Ki reveals her marriage plans to her agency chief, Kwang Suk, who also agrees to arrange the wedding for her. However, Su Ki has to work for the agency until her daughter is 15 years old. The agency has also figured its next target for her. Kwang Suk wants to do an assassination from a wedding catering company so decides to arrange a wedding between Hyun Su and Su Ki from that company. In the next scene, we see that the agency pays people to attend the wedding. Meanwhile, Su Ki in her wedding gown aims a rifle out a window at her target. She fires two shots but misses the target due to his constant movement. When she zooms in on the rifle scope to have a clearer vision, everything around her pauses for a moment. Her target is none other than her late husband, Jung Sang. Su Ki can't kill him, shocked that he's still alive. In the meantime, Jung Sang tracks the location from which the shots came and identifies Su Ki. Later, he follows her to a restaurant and confronts her with his gun. However, Su Ki pretends that she doesn't know him. Jung Sang takes off but manages to tape a conversation between Hyun Su and Chief Kwon Suk where the former is reporting to her about Su Ki. The following day, Jung Sang sends the taped conversation to Su Ki. The conversation reveals that Hyun Su is actually an undercover agent, assigned to keep tabs on her. Su Ki tears up and begins to cry because of the betrayal. She starts wondering if Hyun Su ever loved her. In the next scene, the agency takes Su Ki into custody after learning that she was in touch with Jung Sang. Elsewhere, Jung Sang's gang gets to Hyun Su and Yoon Hye in the apartment. Hyun Su tries to tell Jung Sang on the phone that Yoon Hye is, in fact, his own daughter, hoping that all the killing will stop. However, Jung Sang doesn't care, and he orders Hyun Su to kill the kid in exchange for his own life. Hyun Su tries to fight the gang, but is knocked unconscious and left with a little girl and a bomb. Next. Jung Sang stages a rescue of Su Ki from the agency's custody. As she reaches her apartment, she watches as the bomb goes off. Hyun Su jumps out of the apartment with Yoon Hye in his arms. Su Ki helplessly runs towards them, but the jump leaves Hyun Su severely injured. Holding her daughter in her arms, Su Ki tries to awaken her, but to no avail. Su Ki bursts into tears as she watches her family die. As she tearfully asks Hyun Su who's behind all of this, he tries to catch his last breath and tell her the truth, but sadly, he succumbs to his injuries. Su Ki thinks it's the work of the agency. In the next scene, we see her confronting Kwan Suk, but the chief finally reveals the bitter truth to her. Hyun Su had found Jiang Chun, the old man with yellow teeth, who is also Su Ki's father's friend and got to know everything. This interview was recorded on surveillance tape. Kwan Suk then plays the tape for Su Ki. Turns out Jung Sang was the real culprit who killed Su Ki's father. Consumed with rage, she tracks him and his gang to a parking garage. She kills all the gang members and confronts Jung Sang. However, he escapes to the street and meets his remaining gang members and they speed off in a passenger bus. Adamant on getting revenge, Su Ki chases after them. She catches up to the bus, boards it, and once again attacks them. Once she's done killing Jung Sang's men, she attempts to kill her ex-husband. The pair duel for a while and both of them are severely injured. Having no choice, Su Ki grabs an axe and slashes the bus driver's hand, causing the vehicle to crash. 
The crash knocks out everyone on board. Thankfully, Suki regains consciousness before Jung Sang does and corners him. When he wakes up, she has an axe over his head, waiting for the right time to kill him. Being vulnerable at the moment, Jung Sang has no choice but to surrender. He accepts killing Suki's father as he puts his head down and starts whistling an eerie tune, the same tune she had heard when the murderer killed her father. Initially, Suki's hand shakes when she raises the axe. Jung Sang belittles her for being a coward. After all, she did love him truly. In the final scene, Suki comes back to her senses. Once again overcome with vengeance, she finishes off Jung Sang and walks out of the wreckage with the police surrounding her.